Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. Welcome to our mini lesson on multiplying integers. Integers include positive and negative numbers and zero, and we're going to be multiplying all sorts of positive and negative numbers today. The rules for multiplying are actually the easiest of all the rules to remember. It's this basic. If it's the same signs, then the answer is going to be positive. If there are different signs, the answer is going to be negative. There's a couple of helpful tools that have been shared with me that I want to share with you. A friend of mine from work said that um, she uses this with her students. If there's a positive number, we'll cover the positive, times the negative number, the result will be negative. That's pretty straightforward. And if there's a negative number times a negative number, we cover those two and the result will be positive. You can use this triangle covering up the positives and negatives, covering up the ones you're multiplying, and the one that's left open or showing is the result. A student of mine, I have to give a shout out to this student, has been very excited to show this tic-tac-toe type board, and, and so I wanted to show this and, and um, thank him for, for sharing it in class. This is used kind of from a left to right perspective, okay? So don't think of tic-tac-toe going across or up and down. Um, it just goes from left to right. Positive times a negative equals a negative. Negative times a positive equals a negative. And a negative times a negative equals a positive. So that's another way for us to remember these rules. But again, this one here is always going from left to right. Let's go ahead and solve a couple of these. I'm going to show you first some examples of multiplication questions that have the same sign and therefore get a positive answer. If it's a positive times a positive, they have the same sign. Both are positive, and so our final result will be positive. That's the case with our first two examples. Then we're going to move on to this example where we have a negative times a negative. Again, if you've got the same sign, negative and negative, the signs are the same, your result's going to be positive. You can also see that using our triangle, um, our multiplication triangle. There's another example of a negative times a negative. Notice I'm writing these in different ways with the parentheses and with the, the dot for multiplication. Um, all of these mean multiplication. If you have decimals, this works exactly the same way. Positive times a positive gives you a positive or a negative times a negative decimal gives you a positive answer. If the signs are the same, your result is going to be positive. Try some out. Go ahead and pause the recording and see what you get for these ones. Let's check out the answers. Notice both answers are positive. We have positive 27 and positive 8.28. That's what we get when we multiply same sign, negative and negative, or positive and positive, always end up with a, a positive answer. Good job. Give yourselves a round of applause if you got that one. Well done. You're on your way to being a mathematician. All right. Here's our quick review. If they have the same sign, the answer will always be positive. Remember, this is for multiplying only. Make sure you remember that that's for multiplying only. Now, what happens if the signs are different? Like this, I have a positive 3 and a negative 4. If the signs are different, I'm going to get a negative answer. It doesn't matter what order it's in, if the positive comes first or the negative comes first. When the signs are different, I get a negative answer. And that works for um, positive and negative numbers. It works for positive and negative decimals. It works for positive and negative fractions as well. Anytime you're multiplying, when you've got a positive and a negative, your result will be negative. And you can see that in these six examples up here on the board. When the signs are different, you have a negative answer. So go ahead and try that out. Um, we have our triangle at the top if you want um, a quick reminder. 
and we're going to talk about the answers. Did you get negative 6? And did you get negative 16.75? If so, give yourself a pat on the back or grab a friend and have them give you a pat on the back because you did really well. And you remember that when you're multiplying numbers with different signs, you get a negative result. Both times, you end up with a negative result. Now, we're going to move on to the next type of question, and that is, what if you get a question like this? If you get more than just two integers that you're multiplying, you get a whole list of negatives all lined up like this. Well, you can use the same rule that we've just used. You can solve it using that same technique. It's just a little bit tricky and takes a little bit of time. I'll show you the, what would happen. First, you multiply the first two numbers. Negative times negative gives you a positive. 4 times 3 is 12. All right. Now let's move on. 12 times negative 2 gives you negative 24. Positive times negative gives you a negative. So, and 12 times 2 is 24. So negative 24. Everything else remains the same. Then we'd go down. Negative 24 times 5 gives us negative 120. Remember, a negative times a positive gives us a negative answer. And then we get down to this, negative 120 times negative 1 gives us a positive, because a negative times a negative gives us a positive. If the signs are the same, we get a positive result, and there it is. And the challenge was that with this is that you have to write down pretty much every step if you want to make sure to not make mistakes. And if you make a typo along the way, or if you accidentally switch a sign at some point, um, you can get an error very easily. There is an easier and a more accurate way to do this, and I'm going to show you that shortcut now. So make sure to take notes on this one. Here it is. Just count the negative signs. I think you thought it was going to be something really challenging. That's it. All you need to do is count the negative signs. If it's even, the answer is positive. If it's odd, the answer is negative. So if you have two negatives, that's an even number, the answer is going to be positive. If you have one negative, that's an odd number, so your answer is going to be negative. So we've already seen this, now we're just going to apply it to questions with more than two numbers that we're multiplying. I wanted to first do it with, um, with variables, because the biggest mistake people make is that they try and actually care about what those numbers are, and you don't have to worry about the numbers. All you're worrying about is what I've just highlighted here, the number of signs. In this case, there are two, one, two. If there are two negative numbers, two is even, therefore your answer will be positive. Even though we don't even know what the numbers are, your answer is going to be positive. Well, I guess unless x is equal to 0 or something. Anyway, um, let's move on to one with actual numbers before I make it too complicated. Um, 1, 2, 3. There's three negative signs. 3 is an odd number. So because there's an odd number of negatives, your answer will be, in this case, negative. I'm not actually doing the math right now. I'm just figuring out if it's positive or negative. Let's do one more with some decimals. Again, I don't care what the decimals are. I'm, all I'm worried about is counting those negative signs. One, two, three, and four. Four is an even number. Therefore, my final answer will be positive. Now, that's the trick I'm going to use when I actually solve these. So if I'm asked to solve this question, what I'm going to do is to first count the number of negative signs. One, two, three, four. Four is an even number. There are four negatives. Four is an even number. So my final answer will be positive. Great. Now I know my final answer is positive. I don't have to do all that negative times a negative, negative times a positive, positive times a, I don't have to worry about all that. I know my final answer is going to be positive. So let's just ignore the signs and multiply like normal. I grab my calculator for this, by the way. I grab my calculator and I do 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 equals 6,720. I know my final answer is positive, so therefore 6,720, my final answer, positive. That was it. Let's do one with negatives and we'll see what happens with the negative one. With this one here, I'm using decimals and I'm using 1, 2, 
three negatives. Three is an odd number, so therefore I know my final answer is going to be negative. Well, if my final answer is going to be negative, I don't have to worry every step of the way when I'm multiplying. I'm just going to ignore the signs and multiply like normal. Let's do it. See how I wrote it all out without any of the signs. And this I plugged into my calculator. I'm not going to do this kind of stuff in my head. I do this in my, in my calculator and I get 12,987.40759. Ridiculous, right? Silly answer. But that's, you know, easier to do it on a calculator than in my head. And I have to remember that my final answer is negative. Why? Because there's one, two, three negative numbers. Three is an odd number. So my final answer is going to be negative. So I'm just going to change that to being negative, that whole thing, 12,900, whatever, whatever, whatever. And we're done. That is how we solve these questions. We solve them quickly and effectively and accurately using this method. So just a quick wrap-up review. If they are of the same signs, then it will give you a positive answer. If they have different signs, they will give you a negative answer. Or if you have more than two numbers you're multiplying, if there's an even number of negative signs, you'll have a positive answer. If there's an odd number of negative signs, you will have a negative answer. I hope that this mini lesson has been helpful for you. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.